Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rula Alani and today we are going to be discussing something a little bit more deep than usual. It could be triggering to some, so just keep it in mind. We are going to be talking about how your attachment style affects the partner that you pick. So this has to do a lot with the psychology, with your childhood, with your subconscious beliefs, how you grew up. Um, we're going to talk in specific about four different attachment styles that you could be showing in your behavior that could be attracting you to partners either for better or for worse. So keep in mind this can be changed. It's not like you're stuck with a certain attachment behavior and you can't change it at all, but it does require a lot of personal work, even therapy and counseling sometimes in order for you to overcome these limiting beliefs and help you grow and maintain a better attachment style. So let's just get right into it. So before we begin, we'll need to discuss the four different attachment styles and how they are created during our childhood while we're not even actually fully aware of it. So first we have secure attachment. So these kids growing up had their needs met all the time. When I talk about needs, that includes food, shelter, belonging, love, you know, think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. These kids had all of the, their needs met consistently. So it wasn't like sometimes their needs were met, other times they were neglected. These kids were continuously being loved and cared for, given food, shelter, all of those things. So in return, they treated their parents with positivity when you know they greeted their parents and so forth so as they grow up that is definitely going to create a healthy attachment style in future relationships at number two we have anxious attachment this is also known as ambivalent attachment so these kids have their needs met some of the time so it wasn't a consistency in their needs being met so these kids tend to have a little bit of apprehension towards their parents because they don't fully believe and trust that their needs will be met all of the time an example of this is let's say sometimes their parents were very caring and loving and other times they were neglectful that is going to create a child who is anxiously attached ambivalently attached and because of this they don't believe that they can rely on their parents they don't believe that they can trust their parents for their needs to be met when greeting their parents they tend to be anxious they tend to be insecure and even more so with strangers. So a lot of this can be seen in how kids greet their parents. Obviously, as we mentioned before with secure attachment, securely attached kids are going to greet their parents with positivity, with love, with hugs, with kisses. Someone who on the other hand is anxiously attached is going to greet their parents with a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of insecurity, a little bit of disbelief in once again having their needs met. For the third style, we have avoidant attachment. So kids who have an avoidant attachment style grew up with parents who were disengaged, disconnected, and neglectful. That creates a recipe for a child who is, once again, very disconnected and disengaged him or herself. These kids subconsciously believe that their needs will not be met and they tend to be avoidant of both their parents and strangers. So you can see this upon greeting. These kids will probably hide from their parents. They might not want to hug or kiss their parents and even more so with strangers. Last but not least, we have the fourth style, which is anxious avoidant attachment style. So this is a mix of the last two styles that we talked about. It's also called disorganized attachment. So this is a child who unfortunately grew up in an environment that was extreme, erratic, frightening, 
or passive intrusive so the kids have no belief in whether their needs are going to be met or not so these can be children of parents who maybe have an addiction maybe have a mental illness like schizophrenia children who grow up in a very disorganized and chaotic environment tend to have both of the last styles we talked about the anxious one and the avoidant one these kids tend to be extremely confused, extremely passive, extremely angry, and non-responsive with their parents. Now that we've briefly talked about those four attachment styles, we're going to talk about how these kids end up creating relationships in the future when they grow older and what kind of defining characteristics are seen in these various attachment styles. So in a secure attachment, we have defining traits being confident, secure, trusting, loving, open. They have high self-esteem and high trust of the success of the relationship. So these people are not really afraid of being cheated on. They're not afraid of rejection. They're not constantly checking up on their partner or feeling the need to have constant attention, affection, and love. They are trusting of themselves, they are trusting of their partner, and that is seen in a very calm, collected relationship style. These people probably like emotional intimacy, but they also feel happy alone. So these people don't need to be in a relationship to feel fulfilled. They are individualistic, they are independent. Furthermore, in relationships, people who are securely attached are comfortable opening up and getting close to people. They are also okay on their own and they don't feel like they need to be someone just to be with someone. So it creates a very balanced relationship. They are not overly needy, they are not overly attached, they're trusting, they're open, they're vulnerable, they're able to become honest with someone. So this is a really Really rare attachment style in today's society because if you look around a lot of people are very closed off they have high walls built up they're scared to love so as we can see someone who's scared to love did not have a secure love um, and their needs being met as children so in turn they're gonna grow up and they're gonna have one of these other attachment styles so for the next one we have anxious attachment Defining traits of this relationship would be fearful, insecure, and aggressive. So these people tend to be overly jealous, overly controlling, um, because they have low self-esteem and high trust. So this person is probably dependent on another person and they act out of fear and losing a relationship. So it's really unfortunate. It doesn't come from ill will or some evil force inside of them. They're actually just afraid of the relationship ending or being cheated on. So they compensate for the fear by being very controlling or very aggressive or very insecure, thinking that that's going to hold the relationship together, which we know it's not. It's actually going to drive people away. So this is a vicious cycle. In relationships, these people are often worried. They see constant reassurance and affection to counteract these worries. So like I was saying, in order to compensate for all the worries that this person has that was actually born inside of them from childhood, they're going to have insecurity issues. They're going to be dependent on other people. They're going to be insecure, fearful, and aggressive. And these people most likely have been in at least a few toxic relationship and this relationship is going to be very clingy. So for the next attachment style, we have avoidant attachment. From the name, avoidant suggests that these people 
avoid things, right? They tend to actually not even get into relationships or close friendships because they are very distant, they're very cold, and they're actually self-reliant. So this is gonna be the opposite of the last situation I was talking about with the very clingy, dependent behavior. These people are opposite. They're self-reliant, they're independent. It's kind of difficult for them to actually release control and let someone help them. These people tend to avoid relationships or close contact altogether. So their defining traits are distant, cold, and very self-reliant. So these people tend to be very successful usually. I mean, they're successful in their business. They're successful in more logical fashion. But when it comes to emotional things, they tend to be more drawn off, more resistant. They have high self-esteem, but low trust in others. So they probably put up walls, super closed off, don't want to be vulnerable, they avoid conflict and confrontation altogether, and in relationships, these people getting close to others really freaks them out. So it causes them to push people away. Maybe you have actually been on a few dates with someone with an avoidant style and everything was going great and then all of a sudden they ghosted you. So that is a clear sign that this person had an avoidant attachment style because possibly they were falling in love with you or they started to gain feelings for you and it freaked them out and they decided, hey, it's better to just disregard this situation altogether. So relationships might be good for a while, but then they lose interest, they cut it off, they ghost the person. So a defining trait for this person is a loner, unfortunately, because once again, they are scared of that intimacy, that close contact. So they just really distant themselves from everyone. And last but not least, we have the combination of the two, anxious avoidant attachment style. So the defining traits for these people are depressed, passive, and non-responsive. So this might be someone who doesn't even respond to messages. This might be someone who retreats fully from a relationship. They have both low self-esteem and low trust. So this is honestly such a sad, disheartening combination because not only are these people non-dependent on others, they don't depend on themselves either. So it really feels like they have no one to turn to. They don't trust themselves. They don't trust others. They're completely closed off. They're not even self-reliant. So they are probably only happy when in a relationship. However, in relationships, they seek out love and affection only to push it away once they get it. So they oscillate between kind of two realms, between being alone and miserable to being in a toxic, abusive relationship. So there's only two extreme. They're de really depressed when they're alone or they're in toxic, abusive relationships. And they might act in stalker or like a creepy way because of all of these things brewing since they were a child. So all in all, just know that it's extremely difficult to be born in this perfect environment as children. It's actually rare to find people who are always in a secure, attached style because a lot of us go through things. It might not even be in our childhood, but maybe we have a betrayal with a friendship or maybe someone, you know, lies to us or really does us dirty in a way and we can carry that pain for so long until we're able to actually deal with it and do the self-work needed to heal. Just remember that we all go through obstacles and challenges, some of us in our childhood, some of us in adolescence, some of us in adulthood, and this is going to taint the way that we see the world, that we portray love, that we consider relationships. I mean, nowadays so many people say, oh, love is trash, relationships are all toxic, they have very skewed vision when it comes to 
an experience that can otherwise be so beautiful and so fulfilling. So my whole purpose in creating this video was to shed light on the fact that we have flaws as humans. We are emotional creatures and a lot of this starts from such a young age and we might grow up and not even know where the source of this angst and bitterness and resentment comes from. But until we start really self-reflecting and analyzing our experiences, our past, why we endured breakups, why we were involved in toxic or abusive relationships. We're never gonna be able to break those cycles and actually experience the love and the fulfilling life that we all truly deserve. It is important to notice our toxic negative traits that are not serving us, that have never served us. I always do an activity when I experience a breakup or pain or rejection. And rather than just point all the fingers on the other person, I do a little bit of self digging. I think, hey, how did I contribute to the demise of that relationship, of that friendship? How could I have carried myself in a better way? How could I grow and learn from this situation? And I think this is key. I think this is something we should all do is to self-reflect, especially after heartbreak or pain or rejection or a toxic or abusive situation. It's really key to look within and to ask ourselves, why did we allow ourselves to be in that situation? Do we not have respect or love for ourselves? Is that something that we need to build within before we can go out into the world and partake in a healthy relationship? A lot of times the answer is yes. We have a lot of work to do and this is something that you can do on your own. However, I highly encourage counseling, therapy, talking to mentors, whatever it may be. I personally have gone to therapy. I went to therapy throughout college. I've talked to doctors. It's something that I'm continuously working towards. I don't think we're ever going to reach a point of perfectionism, but as long as we're learning and growing from each scenario, then we are definitely on the right track. When we recognize our toxic traits and we deal with them, not only are we improving ourselves, but we're going to improve the confidence we have in other people. We are going to allow ourselves to trust people once again, which as you guys know, anytime we give someone trust, there's a risk involved, but there's also beauty involved in being, you know, vulnerable and taking risks and just saying, hey, heck with it. There is so much beauty that I'm missing out on by not being trusting, by not being secure, by not being, you know, closed off in this bubble. So realize that there's so much love and light on the other side of self-work, of healing, of therapy. I know it sounds like really cliche, like, oh God, go to therapy. What can they do for me? But really a lot can be done. I personally, myself, I used to be more of an anxious attachment style. I was very clingy. Um, I tended to maybe be a little bit jealous sometimes, a little bit judgmental, a little bit critical. And now I would definitely say that I'm securely attached. I'm fully trusting of my partner and vice versa. I mean, if he doesn't text me or call me back in 30 minutes, an hour, even a few hours, my first thought isn't, oh my gosh, what he, what could he be doing? We have so much trust and love for each other and we communicate openly. We're never shy to talk about our feelings, to talk about if something feels off. And I am so happy that I did the healing, that I did the work, that I went to therapy. Because let me tell you, if I didn't, I probably would have still been that clingy girlfriend who needed undivided attention, affection, and love 24 hours of the day. But but thankfully I got the help that I needed and I blossomed into the woman that I am today. 
So this can be life-changing not only for our love life, but for our mental health, for our sanity, and for the future of our life, you guys. Our future is in our hands, and until we do the work and take responsibility for everything that happened to us, we're not going to be able to grow into the best version of ourselves. A few last words for you guys. Remember that change always starts within. We can't control the external, but we can always control our reaction and how we respond. It is our responsibility, nobody else, not our parents, not our ex-boyfriend, not our partners. It is our responsibility and our duty to fix the side effects of the trauma that we have endured. We can't just sit around passively. We can't just wait for others to solve our personal problems. This is our work that we need to do, and it's up to us to make the changes in order to have a different outcome. So make sure to comment your thoughts on this topic. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys, and I will see you all very soon. Bye.